I'm here at the Royal Society in London to see their annual summer science exhibition, where they showcase the best science this country has to offer. Interactive stands from institutions all over the UK are invited to show the public what they are working on. To find out more, I spoke to Bill Hartnett, Director of Communications at the Royal Society. People forget just how central science is to their everyday lives. Scientists are doing amazing things. At the Summer Science Exhibition this year, we've got new treatments for cancer, comet chasers, a seven-meter dinosaur. So there's a lot of great things for people to come and see. And the most important thing is that people actually get to talk to the scientists who are doing the work. They're getting it firsthand. My name is Professor Phil Manning. I am at the University of Manchester and I'm also director of the Interdisciplinary Centre for Ancient Life. So we're standing underneath the tail of a giant T-Rex looking animal. Can you tell me a bit about this guy? It's very good reasoning this is a T-Rex looking animal because it's an ancestor of T-Rex. This is Gorgosaurus. What's exciting about this particular fossil, it's a new species of Gorgosaurus. But more exciting about this fossil is what's wrong with it. In this case it's got a bony tumour in the hind portion of the brain responsible for locomotion. And what is fascinating about that, it seems to have a knock-on effect on the rest of this skeleton. There's an absolute smorgasbord of injuries across the whole of this organism that we study from scanning the overall skeleton to look at the bones so we can calculate body mass and locomotor ability. However, we also interrogate the bones with x-rays because we use some of the brightest light in the universe, literally 10 billion times brighter than the sun. And this allows us to peer into the innermost workings in the bone when the animal was alive over 70 million years ago. So we can actually see and understand the chemistry of healing in the bones and these injuries that we see in this dinosaur. So I'm Matt Edgar. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Glasgow University. I'm here at the Royal Society all week to exhibit a 3D photo booth. So people here can come along and take their 3D pictures of themselves, which is amazing. But what sort of uses do you foresee for this? OK, so we all like having our, our photos taken, I suppose. But one of the things that we're going to be doing is actually asking people, do they prefer to see themselves in 3D or recognise their friends better? in 3D than in 2D. Now that could have implications for security. Would having a sort of 3D hologram of your picture on identity cards be more helpful to passport control or anywhere where your sort of identity is quite important? But um, just as a more kind of friendly aspect, we're at a stage where we can actually print people's heads. So you can come and have a, a 3D photograph taken and then have a 3D model of yourself, you know, a little chess piece. So you can family. have your very own chess set with your own face. With your whole family, yes. <laughs> your whole family is a chess set. Hi, I'm Oz Ismail. I'm from the UCL Centre for Advanced Biomedical Imaging and I'm the research manager there. So we've got jellyfish here in tanks. Um, what are they doing here? Jellyfish are transparent and we can see through them. Now, the idea about medical imaging is to be able to see inside the body and if we can make the body transparent, much like a jellyfish, then it will make our lives so much easier. So if you look at our jellyfish, we're shining the light on top of the jellyfish and we can see the detailed structures inside them. We are now developing techniques where we can do the same thing to organs. So if you go over to our light section, you'll see some cleared organs. So these are optically cleared, which means that we've taken pigments. So the pigments that make our blood red, gives our skin the color that we are. Those are the pigments that we can take out and then just leave the structural information to see details inside the body. So the challenge is to make a, a person transparent we can't really do it while we're still alive. So that's why we're doing it on isolated bits of organs. But that still tells us so much because, for instance, if we can, make, if we can isolate uh, a bit of cancer and make that clear, we can see how big, how it's developing and really target treatment uh, based on the structural information we can get from these techniques. Looking around the exhibition as well are a lot of students checking out the science for themselves. Bill Hartnett told me more about how the exhibition wants to inspire students. Probably the most important audience for us are students. We want to get as many students here as possible to inspire them to study science. The exhibition's amazing. We've been to loads of different exhibits and they've all taught us different aspects of science and how they're used in like everyday life. Would you recommend that your friends come and see this? Yes. 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 Just an amazing day. So there we have it. Whatever your age, if you want to get a 3D selfie or see the world's clumsiest dinosaur, the Summer Science Exhibition is open until this Sunday and is absolutely free.